Well, good macho morning, gentlemen. I hope you're doing well today and that uh, you're sensing God's blessings and working in your life. And uh, Or you may be really going through some tough times. You know, not everything is, is easy. And so wherever you are, I pray that you're able to just allow God to work and allow God to move, whether it be in the, the, the good or it be in the, the difficult. And by the way, either of those, I'd love to walk with you and uh, minister to you in any way. Well, we're in Christmas season, as you know, and as we're going through Christmas season and, and looking at the various aspects of it, you know, obviously the Christmas story is Christ coming to earth, God the Son coming to earth. We call it Advent. We talked about that yesterday, coming. But it's really heaven come to earth, if you will, because that's what happened. You know, Jesus in heaven came to earth. Almost all the encounters we see in, in Matthew and Luke and the Christmas stories, angels are involved, heaven coming to earth. So that's our focus, as you saw yesterday in our, in our preaching and, and worship time throughout the month of December. And so we're moving through this and we're looking at different stories. There's some, some great stories to, to be a part of. We're going to talk about some of these stories also here in our, our macho time. And we begin today with where we were yesterday in the story of Zechariah and the coming of, you know, the preparation for John the Baptist. And so what's cool about the Christmas story is, yes, it is ultimately about Christ. But John the Baptist is, is wired in here as well. You know, we talked about John the Baptist back in, um, I believe it was back in September when we were beginning our series of, of the Gospel of John. And we, we looked at him a little bit. He came up there in chapter 1 and chapter 3. So anyway, now we're told his birth story because his birth story is so important. And what we, we see here is that when heaven comes to earth, God is up to something. God just doesn't come to earth, doesn't send his angels, doesn't do just to kind of hang out. God is up to something. And we see this in the Zechariah story and, and, and what's happening. And I'm not going to go back and reread the entire story, but I want to pick out two main things from yesterday and from the text to, to think about as God is up to something and moving in our lives. And let's go back to verses uh, 12 and 13, if you will. That's where we'll start. It says, Zechariah, so the angel appeared, said hey to him. Okay, and Zechariah obviously, like I know I would have been, was like, whoa, what's this? Uh, kind of freaked out a little bit. But he said, Zechariah was troubled when he saw the angel and fear gripped him. But the angel said, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. Notice that. Do not fear. Fear, in many ways, is a natural default. When anything upsets us, it takes us in a different direction. And so to, to see Zechariah do that is understandable. But notice what the angel said. Don't. He said, hey, I'm here because God told me to be here. I'm here because God's got, got a purpose. In fact, he says that deeper in here. He's like, to Zachary, he's like, I, I, came, I came from heaven, man. I was before the throne of God, and God sent me here to you. So you don't need to be afraid of anything. I'm here on assignment. I'm here on purpose. Well, God, through Scripture, through the Holy Spirit, is going to visit us. And he's going to speak to us. And we don't have to have a spirit of fear. You know, that's not part of, when, when God is working, our humanness may say, be afraid. Satan may be kind of stirring the pot to create fear. But God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that I'm here to, to, to work in you and to use you. And alongside of that is, is purpose. See, the angel told Zechariah specifically what, what John was going to be about. In fact, when I read 15 through 17, hear this. It says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or liquor, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while still in his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. And it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers back to their children and the disobedient to the attitudes of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So he said, hey, this guy's got a purpose. Your son that you didn't think you could have because of your age and because of your wife's status, he's coming. And he's not the Messiah, but he's preparing for the Messiah. 
And so he said, don't be afraid. I, I, I'm doing something. And you get to be a part of it. And I think that's the thing we need to take with us today when we look at the Zechariah story, the John the Baptist story, is to say, well, I allow God to be up to something because God is. God moves today just like he did then. We may see some things differently, but God moves. God's at work. And we know that when you read the end of this story, the people were really like, whoa, what's happening here? God's at work. And that still happens today. So what are you sensing God wants to be up about in your life? It could be healing a relationship. It could be dealing with a, a doubt or a, a fear issue in your life. It could be handling a, a, a medical issue or physical or emotional problem that you might have. It might be rectifying some things at work or dealing with some finances. There's so many things. Maybe it's a call to ministry in some specific way. What is God up to in your life? What do you sense? And so here's a challenge. Do not allow, allow fear to prevent you from moving forward. I know what that's like. Don't, don't allow fear to keep you from moving forward. And embrace the purpose to which God's called you. And then see Him work. So I want to encourage you today. God's pulling at your heart. God's showing things, you things in, in His Word. God's moving in your spirit. He's doing it because He's up to something. Embrace Him and let Him move in you. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for me and my, my friends, my brothers in Christ. Lord, may we allow you to work. May we allow you to move in our lives. May we recognize when you're calling us to purpose. And may we not be paralyzed by fear, but may we be motivated by your love and your choosing of us to be used by you. So I pray for these men. I pray for, for me. May we allow you to work and maneuver in us. May we let you be up to something in our lives. And so in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, hey, have a good week. Two reminders this coming Wednesday. We have our uh, monthly macho gathering after church on Wednesday night. Hope you, hopefully you can hang out with us in the fellowship hall about 7.30, 7.35. Come on, come on in. Hopefully you're here for Bible study or you may be elsewhere on the property. And then Sunday, ball game time, we're going to be having a Jags watch party after the service in the fellowship hall. And uh, Jags play the Browns, and we're looking forward to that. We're going to have pizza and wings and things like that. So um, we'll probably ask for guys just to throw in a couple bucks as a donation to offset the cost. You know, probably five would be great. And so we look forward to that. Have a good week. Let me know if you need anything. Love you.